In this video, we review the top regulatory fines given to financial institutions globally in 2020. So let's get right into today's video. Hi and welcome to FinCrime Agent. This is my YouTube channel where I'm talking about financial crime prevention and anti-money laundering related topics. With 2020 out of the way, I wanted to complete a research to understand the size of fines that were assigned to financial institutions globally for regulatory reasons. So at the back of my research, I have found some interesting information that I want to share with you. So let's get started with the slides and see some of the key findings that I have discovered. Let's start with the total aggregated fines that were assigned to financial institutions in 2020. The sum that came up on finball.com was $14.04 billion. So this is a website that I am not associated with in any way, but I think the information they put in there are reliable enough and I believe the fines that were included in these sums were for all financial institutions above half million euros and the information were accurated up to the end of December when I last checked this website. So for most of the data I'm relying on this website finball.com which I think they provide some uh, interesting information on their blog regarding the fines for financial institutions. So $14.04 billion was the total amount assigned throughout financial institutions globally for regulatory reasons. The country that had most separated fines by financial institutions was the United States with a total of eight fines identified. The largest one, which we will cover also in a minute a bit more in details, was provided to Goldman Sachs for $3.9 billion. In terms of the most common violation, anti-money laundering was the key trend that was identified across those fines. Let's now take a closer look at the five largest fines for 2020 that were given to financial institutions. The first one, as I said before, was assigned to Goldman Sachs for a total of $3.9 billion to the Malaysian government at the back of the 1MDB scandal. In summary, the Malaysian prosecutors pressed charges originally against a number of Goldman Sachs units for their involvement in helping to collect billions of dollars for a sovereign wealth fund which was named 1MDB, which was later then discovered to be used by some of the officials as a private piggy bank. Goldman Sachs has therefore agreed to pay this sum of money to the Malaysian government in July 2020, making it the largest fine of the year. The second largest fine was paid by Wells Fargo for $3 billion. This is again another financial institution based in the United States. This fine was uh, connected to a case that was raised about four years ago where the financial institution was identified to have a large volume of false accounts being created. So this payment settled the civil and criminal liability at the back of this controversy for the false accounts and Wells Fargo has agreed in February 2020 to pay the sum of $3 billion. The third largest fine was for $2 billion and again this is assigned to Goldman Sachs. This time is on the US side, this payment, so at the back of the scandal of 1MDB that we've seen before have created a record fine for $3.9 billion paid to the Malaysian government. Also on the US side the investigation was raised and part of the same investigation was also generating a fine on the US side which has been settled for $2 billion dollars where Goldman Sachs had to pay to their local regulators. The fourth largest fine was assigned to JP Morgan Chase for $920 million in 2020. 
The fine was connected to the behavior of workers who, according to the regulators, fraudulently manipulated the market tens of thousands of times between 28 and 2016. And the fifth largest fine was connected to Westpac at the back of payments that may be related to child exploitation. Westpac, which is the second largest lender in Australia, has apologized for failing to identify those activities. So these were only the top five largest uh, fines that were given to financial institutions in 2020 globally. However, I want to show you on the next slide some more fines and I'm going to list the top 30 by size. And you can see on my slide the rank by size, which country the financial institution is connected to, the name of the financial institutions and obviously the total amount of fine assigned to them. Again, this information has been gathered from finball.com, a website where I'm not related to it, but um, I believe the information reported are accurate. So this is all I wanted to share with you today at the back of my research on the largest fines of 2020. I hope the information I shared are useful and I hope you have enjoyed my video. If you haven't done that, remember to subscribe to my channel and press the bell so you can get notified once new videos are going live. And do comment this video, let me know what you think about those finds or if you have anything else that can enrich the information I'm sharing through the video. Remember also to check the description of this video for more information, links and references for the research that I have completed and in there you will also find my patreon.com page where with a small contribution you can support FinCrime Agent. So that's all, thank you for watching, I hope you have enjoyed and until next time, see you soon.